The foundation of self-defense is attitude, even if your skills aren't really up to par. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. I had this one sent to me a million times. I wanted to wait just a little while to see what the news story said to bring it to you. It comes to us out of Los Angeles, California. Wilderness Tactical has been around for longer than the gun you're carrying has been, and they have been making high quality products for concealed carriers for literally decades. I wear their low pro belt every year. The webbing is the best in the industry and I won't wear anything else. If you're looking for a good CCW belt, check them out. Our self defender here is a prominent, fairly wealthy man, comes home, he lives in a, you know, he's got a little gate there, but a low wall and two dudes jump it. And they followed him home from Starbeast or something. You're gonna see him walk down towards his front door to get his, you know, get inside his house. He digs out his keys. And these guys are gonna come and jump him from behind. At least one of them is gonna get to him here. And you can see he does. When he does, guy kind of squashes his, his coffee all over him, draws his gun, starts going to work on these guys. And he doesn't hit a darn thing. But simple, the, the fact of the matter is the gunfire drives them off. He didn't hit either one of them. Thankfully, they did not end up shooting at him and they ran away. They have not been caught as far as I know. If you go read the news stories that I've linked in the description, this made a bit of splash on the national news. Uh, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department that issued his CCW suspended his CCW after this, which obviously I think is a pretty significant mistake. They've made some statements about that. Links is in the news story. Uh, thankfully, he was okay here. I don't know if he has gotten his CCW back from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department yet, or if they've caught either one of these guys. As far as the day that this is made and posted, we haven't heard any updates. The self defender here has given a boatload of interviews about this issue as well as his CCW being revoked. He's an NRA member, so the NRA has played this one up pretty big. I think there's some tactical considerations that we need to talk about first. Remember that your driveway is a transitional space and you can see here he's got kind of a low pony wall up, but, but that's not going to stop anybody from being able to come over it that wants to come over it, right? So <clears throat> the fact of the matter is your driveway, if you're not you know, back behind the door, if you're in a garage that's not got the garage door closed, you're in a transitional space and that's any place where you know uh, people can attack with an element of surprise, get away quickly and there are valuables present. And that is uh, certainly in a driveway. So you gotta pay attention. See that car driving by and stopping in front of your house when you wouldn't expect that. You know your neighbors, there aren't, you know, they're not driving a car like that. You want to pay attention. He doesn't catch that here, which I don't necessarily blame him for, but I'm saying part of carrying a firearm is paying attention to your world. So pay attention. Now instead, he's just kind of bebopping along, hanging out, whatever. And when these guys jump the fence, he doesn't hear him either. So use your ears in your self-defense. You might have heard him jump the fence there too. Now you notice what he's waiting on here is he's like, oh man, I gotta dig my, my house key out of my pocket. I want you to recognize when you're sitting in this place here, you should do some pre-planning and see, man, this is a really big problem in this particular case. And you know, in a modern context, they make an awful lot of, of door locks that are Bluetooth or that you know you can unlock with your phone, something like that, so that when you show up, <clears throat> you can very quickly unlock it with your cell phone and get in the house and close the door much more quickly because you want to get through that transitional space. This is a place where people will attack you. Now, again, you might live in a nice community, but hey, this guy lives in a nice community. He's a wealthy man, and next thing you know, dude's got a gun up on him, right? So our first time that our defender, because he didn't see that they were coming, the first time he knows he has a problem, is when a guy's got a gun pointed at him. Man, most uh, people that lose gunfights, one of the real things that we see all the time is they don't know they're in one until it's already the middle of it. So this is why I say, if you can pay attention, your draw time is less important if you can see it coming a long way away and head it off at the pass or be prepared for it. So yeah, draw time could be important, but hey, you know, other things are important too. Now I want us to notice as well, notice here he does this thing where he like splashes him with the, the coffee. Hey, <clears throat> I don't know if that was intentional or not. I quite frankly don't. If it was, I think it's a tactic, but recognize dude has a gun pointed at you. You could have easily pressed the trigger there and killed you dead. Don't know that that would have been the right choice in my opinion. I think if you're, you know, a real meat eating crime fighter here, you go for his gun is what you do. You actually are not just trying to splash coffee on him and go for your gun. 
you're like, nope, I'm in arm's reach. It's not your gun, buddy. It's our gun. And I'm probably better at this than you, but you got to get on the mats to do that. Instead, our guy decides, nope, I'm going to splash a coffee on him, which drives him off. And now I'm going to go and get my gun. Now he does a pretty darn good job here because that drives the guy off enough that he gets his gun out. And I've slowed that down for the sake of time, but he got about a 1.8 draw to first shot. It's actually pretty good. You know, we say the national standard for a concealed carrier is under two seconds and he was moving and all that. But a couple things I do want to notice you notice that he's not aiming the gun. He just got the gun kind of up towards eye level and starts ripping shots off at him. They're not even very good shots, friends, and that is a problem. That is a pretty significant issue. It's draw to first hit that's important, not draw to first rattlesnake rattle. You notice here he rips off a shot at a quarter second split and another one, and he's just firing blindly with a, a fairly poor grip. Now, it's the worst day of his life. I don't want to give him too much crap about it, but none of these shots hit anything, okay? And remember, you're morally responsible for every round that leaves the muzzle of your firearm. And misses don't stop deadly threats. FIBSA is real, right? Fudge, I'm being shot at, but they have a much lower chance of stopping a threat than FIBS. Fudge, I've been shot. And so we want to get hits. And how do we get hits? We use the sights. That's what we do. Yes, you, you will use your sights in a real gunfight if you've trained yourself to do so, if you've taken competent instruction and practiced enough to do so. So, okay, fine. He, he drives the guys off with a noisemaker. You know, it's a rattlesnake rattle. But then they get out of there. Okay, cool. Be very cautious, friend, where you go from there. Now, I think it was good for him to get out of the hallway that he was in there, that kind of entryway of his house, because that's just a corridor of death there. But where are you going from there? Remember, don't just run after him. I know people are going to say, hey, man, you got to chase that guy down. Nope. Control your predator drive. Remember, your mission as a private citizen is to break contact with a deadly threat. So don't just run away from danger. Run to safety. Get yourself to a safe place and don't chase. I hope this guy gets his CCW back quickly. I think everything he did was justified. Thankfully, nobody was harmed by all the bullets flying around. <clears throat> I think having a little higher level of skill would have been okay. Listen, I don't know Mr. Ricci personally. Uh, I know plenty of great firearms trainers in the Southern California area. So if you do know him, you get him in contact with me, I'll get him in touch with a great firearms trainer so he can get some more additional skill sets. We can maybe <clears throat> talk to the PIO at the LA County Sheriff's Department as well. Make sure that he is getting on track to getting his CCW back. At the end of the day, hey, he did enough to cover his ASP.